And I, I do, I agree with you. I think vulnerability is still, I think at the essence of what, just of what art is. Art is meant to be honest and true. And that just happens to be what the good news is, is it's honest and it's true. Kind, and I'm so excited to talk with Zach. Zach, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Oh my goodness. We have been spinning light of your grace. And I had, I'll just be honest for a minute, I was thinking that we might not have citizen stuff for a while. So when that popped Ooh. in, I was like, what? We got to get this going. <laughs> I love it. Well, I'm so glad you guys are playing it. It's one Absolutely. of our favorites. And it sounds good on the air. It's one of your favorites. That's been a special one for us. So, yeah, you know, um, you know, it's it's a song that was written out of confession. Really, I um, I had lied to my wife about just something very stupid, something really small, and wasn't really that important and I convinced myself well I shouldn't talk to her and days went on and then I was sitting there and I was reading first John and I was just reading through it and I got to the part where it says if uh, if our hearts condemn us God is greater than our hearts and I was just struck with the fact that all this time the thing that was keeping me from confessing to my wife was just this weight of shame that uh, wasn't from God that it was from yeah. just my feelings are from somewhere else. Yes. And so I was able to sort of let go of that. And um, John, you know, the book of or John's letter there is so good. Um, yeah. There's a verse in there. If we walk in the light, it sees in the light, we have fellowship with one another, which is like one of our family verses. So that's kind of how that came in. Like in the light of your grace, um, I can be free and known and ultimately loved by you and so that's really where that that song came from and it just so happened to be true for a couple of the other guys in the band around the same time so it just wound up being special for us and it's been special for us because we've had response from it in the way that people are uh really digging into what you have to say digesting the words that you say mm -hmm. the music video was amazing i feel like you all just push the church pews out of the way and just yeah. like sang you know it was so <laughs> yeah. amazing that's a church in seattle that's actually the church that we all met in really? um yeah it's crazy so we met in that it's an old building probably 150 years old and we met there and then um when we wanted to make this video we asked them if we could use that space because the church that we were a part of isn't a church anymore yeah. And so it's a new church that run, that owns it and they were kind enough to let us use it. And so it was pretty special to be back in the place where we all met. Oh so. my gosh, it's beautiful. It's a gorgeous video and I, it, I love it. Well, thank you. I love like the that's panorama so cool. feel. Yes, it. that's cool. Very well done, very well done. Tell us about um, how you take an inspiration um, and put it into a lyrical cadence. Yeah. Uh, that's a great question. I mean, I think for me, so oftentimes, I'm, I just, I really, I love what just music in general and writing lyrics and having rhythm, that's kind of restrictive in a certain way, but I like it because it, it causes me to have to distill my thoughts down. And I feel like so many of the songs I write oftentimes, um, I probably even months before wouldn't have really been able to have a very clear conversation around that idea. But that song just helps me to kind of focus and really get rid of all the words I don't need and find the ones that really best describe what it is that I'm wanting to say. And so that's always been a huge part for me is I just, I really want what I'm singing to feel conversational and to feel like the kind of language that you and I would use right now as we're talking. Right. Well, and that's what makes the impact, because I think as more and more music is released, um, 
I don't know if it takes longer for people to make that connection, but I think the more honest you are with the lyric, the quicker the mm -hmm. connection can happen. And I just feel like we're in a place in music, and you can tell me if you feel differently, um, that people want to cut cut through it. You know, they want to yep. get to it um, because they're listening. Although there's something always going on in their headset, yep. maybe they're yep. listening in intentional ways. There's songs that they're choosing in these intentional moments. And I feel like light of your grace um, speaks volumes. Well, that's encouraging to hear. And I, I do, I agree with you. I think vulnerability is still, I think at the essence of what, just of what art is art is meant to be honest and true and that just happens to be what the good news is is it's honest and it's true and when you couple those things together i think that's a really special thing yeah it's the perfect marriage exactly yes marriage of art <laughs> yeah wow yes. that's, yeah um and sometimes i think we forget about god the creator and mm -hmm. uh, we think, oh, he created the earth and the stars and the sky and, you know, all of this. Yeah. All of a sudden we forget that he still continues to create, uh, whether it's, right. uh, you know, a child or a, or, or a thought mm -hmm. in our mind. Yep. Um, and so I'm glad that you're capturing that. Do you have to discipline yourself to sit and write these lyrics or are you more the type that you know pieces come to you as you're going about your day and you just make sure that you keep a log I think it's definitely the latter like I I try and be really conscious of anytime I have an idea um <laughs> like for instance yesterday we we were at church and I had a a song idea and I, I was like I gotta walk outside and get my phone real quick <laughs> quick to record this idea um, and I think that so much of the, the way that I like to write, um, starts with that, but then it comes with the discipline of just really needing to like, all right, now that I've got this idea, what I want it to say, what's it meant to communicate. And that's the part that I think I have to be a little bit more diligent in because it's easy to have a bunch of ideas. It's a lot harder to have something that's really focused. And so I, I try and set aside time to really make sure that I'm completing these ideas too. Yeah, that's the hard part. You know, I feel like he, it's kind of like when um, a child hands you a flower, you know, if my my daughter, or my son's handed me a flower, um, you know, then that that stands on its own, like the thought that you were just talking about. But right. to to make an arrangement, um, I mean, you got to try things and nope, that's not yeah. work or that's too harsh against it. Or, you know, yeah. whether you're talking about arranging flowers or arranging musical thoughts, yeah. um, yep. that's the challenging part. And so I think that following through has got to be the number one tough yeah. part of songwriting. And finishing, you know, because you, you get to a certain spot and you're like, oh, that was a lot of work. And all right, I've got, you know, you, it's kind of like, I mean, the house project even, you're like, well, we'll get those last few nails in the wall later. And then they don't get done for a year. <laughs> right, right, So exactly, exactly. Well, tell me about um, the joy of being. We're talking about collecting uh, thoughts to create a song, and now you're just gonna magnify it by putting an album together. Um, yeah. How did that get built? Well, I mean, it's interesting because the concept of that record came about prior to the pandemic. But then in the midst of making the record is when the pandemic began. And all of a sudden, all the things that we wanted to do, we couldn't do. Um, and it's interesting that, and I'm still struck by this, that we would have this idea of the joy of being, of just being present with God, being present with, with each other, um, that we'd have this concept there <clears throat> that would mean something more than ever going into a pandemic. We were living in Seattle at the time. And so we were in a lot of lockdowns and stuff. And so we weren't around people as much. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that what was really helpful for all the really hard things, we certainly experienced some really hard things during the pandemic and 
people still are. Yeah. I think the beauty of it is it forced us all to slow down and to kind of put less emphasis on what we do and really discover more of what are the things that we actually value. And I, and to me, really, that's what the joy of being is, which is really pretty special that that concept was there before we had any idea that we'd be going into something like that. Yeah. Um, and I think it was honestly there because we, I needed to hear that. Like I needed it for myself, you know, to just see that there is, that it's like, I guess our primary calling by God, I always think about this. Um, someone pointed this out to me years ago, but when Jesus is baptized and he's coming up from the water, you know, the clouds open up and voice of God, voice of the father says, you know, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Yeah. And a friend of mine years ago pointed out that that was uh, God saying that before Jesus does any of his ministry work. So before Jesus did anything, he was first identified as a beloved son. Wow. And, uh, and I think that that was just as much for Jesus as it was for us to hear too, and know that mm. our primary place in life is first and foremost being loved by God. And so we operate out of that. And that's really what that record is all about. It's just finding our, our place in, in belonging to Christ and knowing that we live in a finished work, not in a work that still needs to, we still need to figure things out, but rather there's a lot of things we might not understand, but we're still part of faith is believing that what Jesus has done is finished. Yes. Well said, Zach. I, I definitely agree with that. Now you went, um, was it after the pandemic that you went the joy of being together live? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I mean, I feel like that too follows along with exactly what you were just saying. It was like the timing, you couldn't have put that on a calendar in a better way. I uh, know, I know. And that was, the, that was another thing, you know, coming out of and a lot of bands and art, and we're not, not just musicians, like so many people experienced the, they made, they, they were working on something and then had the wind taken out of their sails, right? Because they couldn't do the thing that they wanted to do. Yeah. And so then uh, to finally be able to come together and play those songs was really, really special, which is why we called it the joy of being together. But also because there is, I, I, kind of like I was saying before, it's like being present uh, with God, but then also being present with, with the people in our lives. I love it. Well, um, I have to talk to you about your vinyl. I, yeah. I, I don't and your CD. I don't think that I've ever seen a clear CD. That was <laughs> how how did you decide, you know what, we're gonna do a CD that's transparent? It just was such a beautiful connection to what the music is saying. Oh man, thank you. You know, um I've just I think we've always just had sort of a I I I tend to like things that are maybe a little bit more monotone. <laughs> and uh, I like things that kind of leave a little bit more mystery. And I think what better than something that's clear or seeing something in a way that you don't normally see it. Wow. Yes, it's definitely eye-catching. It's, it's gorgeous. Well, well thank you. It yeah, really thank you so much. Gorgeous. And it is Thanks. mysterious because then you're like, how's this playing? How's this, you know, like, where is this? I mean, it <laughs> how does it do it? How well, part of that's just it? the technology today. It's amazing what they can do. So I why know. not use it? So you pressed what looked like to me stained glass looking vinyl. Um, were mm -hmm. you part of the the pressing process? Did you watch that happen? Or did you just uh, say, you know what? I'm going to pick cobalt blue. And that's what's going to be the. You know, yes, that, you know, it's it's funny with vinyl nowadays there are a few people in the u.s that you can go to to watch them but most of the biggest plants are in other countries oh. so in that case you pick your colors and then they send you they mail you back from the other country like tests and you say oh, oh i like it or i don't like it and you send it back so but I, I mean i have been able to be a part of that process on our uh on our third or sorry on our third record that we did and that was a pretty cool process just to see that made and uh, it's pretty neat to see vinyl being a, a thing again i love that yeah it is it is becoming a thing again next stop eight tracks there we go bring them back <laughs> bring them back I, it's funny too even my daughter 
and some of my their friends are into cds and stuff like that now so it's kind of like okay there we go do you know what i saw in just a big box store i walked in and i saw a cassette deck and i was like okay so the trend obviously we're coming back it here. comes back I around like, i can always buy comes a back around. deck for 39.99 <laughs> there we go set it up oh my gosh plug and play it there is we cool go. I love it. to see some of that stuff coming back um, yeah it just it is something different to hold the vinyl and to put it on and uh to borrow a phrase put the needle on the record <laughs> yeah i love it <laughs> I haven't heard That's of that so part good. for a while. Yeah, um, right, right. So tell me a little bit about what you saw on your third record in the pressing process that kind of just took you by surprise. If you can remember back. Yeah, you know, I mean, some of the things that are really interesting is, you know, on a vinyl, the way that like, you know, you have low frequencies that create like bass and kicks, you know, kick drum and everything. And then you have your high frequencies that'll be a hi-hat or really, you know, uh, a high keyboard sound or guitar sound and it's interesting on vinyl you cut down which to get low to get deep sounds yeah. and then as it comes up it's some of your higher frequencies and what was hard about our third record is we had too many songs on one side so they so it was he had to do a lot of cuts in order to get the in order to make sure we had the low end frequency in there yeah. and then what was interesting is on our last song of the record uh oh they call it there's a name for it we basically did this thing where it's this sort of locked loop where the very last note of the song it just keeps playing infinitely so it kind of and it just keeps going on and on so we had people emailing us like what there's something wrong with this vinyl <laughs> we're like no we actually did that on purpose we paid extra for that <laughs> yeah we we paid extra for that for that thing that you don't like so <laughs> so true yeah fickle yep. music listeners yeah um, well they're out there <laughs> a, a long time ago i uh worked for reliant k when they first uh signed a record deal and you know we love matt Tyson's songwriting and yep um he had done this ep and my i'm 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 not even joking my favorite track on the end of it was where he left the studio and his dad mowed the lawn for 40 minutes. It's the most relaxing <laughs> ending to the record. That sounds incredible. I love uh, it. Like a 40 minute, just his dad walking back and forth in the yard, mowing the grass. That's amazing. You know? I don't, I don't remember it, what EP that was. It's the little things in life. You it know? is the so. little things. It is the little things. Well, we still play You Brought Me Back to Life and The Mighty Hand mm -hmm. of God. Those are, I think, your signature songs to me. Um, what would you say your, you know, your fan, um, what are their top songs? Those are definitely up there for sure. Um, Made Alive is always a crowd favorite when we're, whenever we're playing live. Um, you know, it's interesting. Another one from that third record that I think people tend to gravitate toward is this, a song called Day by Day. And um, that one in particular, I think, has has been a special one because one, it's it's there's a lot of words. And so it's sort of telling this story. Yeah. But it's really a song about being sanctified, being changed every day, day by day by day by day. Yeah. Um, and that's been a that's been a cool one to sing with people over the years and just kind of it's like one of those songs where we can play with the whole band or I can just play with a guitar and I love I love that. So right. Well you mentioned you're uh not living in Seattle now post pandemic. No. Where are you yep. at? We are just you're in outside. A bunker. It looks like yes. you might be in Montana. <laughs> yeah, we might as well be. We are just outside Nashville in a cabin. We bought we were the crazy people that bought a cabin and uh, we've been slowly fixing up the property and all that kind of stuff and have a dream of it being a, 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 a retreat place and just a place that operates as like a bridge for people to come and to be able to be here and rest and, and, um, and just listen to God as God speaking. And so 
we're we love it but it's so different from living in the city in seattle and now all of a sudden uh like this morning i had just a family of turkeys crossing the road you know didn't see that in seattle well yeah in a different context <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah different kind of turkeys <laughs> <laughs> well, I love that mission, uh, and your your wife's in, huh? She wants to do it too. Yeah, oh, we're in it together. She's driving that more than I am, so it's it's really, really sweet. Mm -hmm. And um, you mentioned you have a daughter. Is she getting yeah. uh, into school? Okay. Yeah, school's good. We actually have four kids, and they're all for the first time in school at the same time. So we have kindergarten up till uh, to seventh grade. So it's it's great it's different for them but um this gets us back closer to family yeah um and and so that's that's been nice oh i love it i love it well i can't wait to hear where this vision is gonna go and i hope we stay connected um thank yeah you so much zach for yeah. just a, your a long time uh work in this industry the art that you've brought and i just want you to know that it's heard it's loved mm. and it's uh taken in to the soul and i thank you for being vulnerable and honest and um, mm. i know that's what true art is and i know um that some folks are not brave enough to do that so mm. i thank you well. for uh, championing that, um, being a champion for that. It's powerful. Mm. That means so much. Thank you, Nick. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. We'll see you. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Right, see you. Bye.